Hello! Welcome to Bad at Board Games. Well, in this game, I'm bad at board games. In space, no one can hear you scream. And I die. Often. Don't touch me. It's okay. Don't touch me. <laughs> Still fun. I'm already starting to get the anxiety build up. Build up. I feel playing the gnome. Toad likes to get probed by aliens. <laughs> that is. Anybody who is watching this channel for any sense of time knows how absolutely as far away from the truth as can be that is. Anyway. Please don't touch me. This is Alien, the movie, the first movie, in a box. Stick around, find out if it's worth it to you. We go over our BGG rating. Mm -hmm. We go over our value rating, even though this one's kind of hard to get right now. <laughs> we go over the weight of the mechanics and pros and cons. This will be a rapid-ish review so that we can try to like give you our download on this. We've had this for a while. I may have reviewed it, but it's been three years ago if I did. <laughs> so I reviewed it again. <laughs> well, and you know, times change, thoughts change. Yep. You know, gameplay, game group. There's like three versions of this out, and they kickstarted a fourth, which was like five million dollars or something with the for the fourth game. It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's a definitely a big blown up game in our industry. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Let's discuss. Yes. So. We're Nemesis, if you haven't figured that out right now, or if you're listening in. We are talking about Nemesis, which is a <coughs> 2018 game designed by Adam Kopinski, and it is published by none other than Awaken Realms. Yep. This is kind of like, I feel like, I think, I don't know if this was their first game, but this set them on the map. Oh, the, Like, the, exploded them on the map like a bomb. Yeah. I mean, you know, Simon does fantastic miniatures, but there is nothing that stands up to the miniatures that you get with these games. I mean, yeah, it's just the, it's the sculptors the of, of Awakened Realms is definitely a, very unique and very amazing and very detailed. And yeah, they do a great job. Fantastic. Do yeah. a great job. So you've already mentioned this is Alien. Um, in a box. What, <laughs> alien in a box. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more theme wise, kind of what is special and unique about Nemesis? So the theme, I would say, you know, it is, it's trying to recreate that tension where you have one alien killing the whole crew. So there's not just one, but you also have this hidden traitor, possible hidden traitor, depending on how your game group likes to play. Because once an alien shows up, then you have these two mission cards that kind of give you like, you may or may not have a traitor mechanic because they're randomly kind of dished out. And so <laughs> your character may... Like, pick the good thing or the good thing. Or your character may have a good thing and a bad thing, and then you may choose to be like, am I going to be the traitor or am I going to... No, I want to be a good guy, you know? So it just in that, the odds of... Like, they all always think I'm the traitor, even though I have yet to be in our game, which is funny. Um, Brad always likes to accuse me of being the traitor. Yeah. And I'm usually right. <laughs> I hate being the traitor. It's like any time <laughs> we play a hidden traitor game, he ends up getting the card multiple times. Brad always wants to be the traitor. I never want to be the traitor. He never gets that role, and I always do. I, I don't, like, That's the board fun. game gods are not shining in favor on us. Yeah, but, you know, that whole tension, um, the theme of it, you know, like, it feels oozing, you know, like you're on this big, giant, derelict ship. Not derelict, but, you know, and an alien... I don't think they ever really explained how the alien got on your ship, but maybe I just haven't read all the fluff, so or any of it. <laughs> yeah, Lord knows I haven't. I am I am not a huge alien movie fan. I have watched them. I've watched the first one probably more so than the others, just because back when it oh god when did it first come like, out? I don't know. I remember 79. being young. Yeah, yeah, so it must have been something that my brothers and stuff were were watching because I remember as young as I could be watching that that movie so yeah. but i don't know if i've watched it since <laughs> so some of the theme i missed out on playing but anyways yeah. it's still a fun game it's good so mechanics yeah there's quite a bit of things that are going on in this game um but by and large this is a cooperative game i akin it to a dragon crawl game um and obviously dragon min crawl dragon call dun dun it's been a day dungeon crawl <laughs> there are no dragons but there's aliens they kind of look like dragons um please don't touch me um, the so, aliens touching you. 
trying to trying to poke you. I. <laughs> and this is why I like Euro games. <laughs> So Dungeon Crawl, it's definitely a miniature <laughs> game. Uh, it is a cooperative game, but as Brad said, it does have a trader m- mechanic thrown into it um, that you may, may not play with. Maybe you might be forced to, you never know. Um, the game itself also has you know, hand management. You're exploring throughout the ship, especially the first part of the game. You're trying to see <laughs> what is where. Um, it, it does have some kind of punishing things that will just show up. I don't want to call them events, but there are things that will happen. And then all of a sudden that might greatly impact your ability to move forward. Um, it does have player elimination. That's another thing that's not a part of a Euro game. Typically <laughs> I like Euros. Um, and the game does not end. The if game, somebody dies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, combat. Um, I guess that's a big thing with this game. So there's going to be conflict. There's going to be combat a little bit of dice rolling thrown in with that, mm-hmm. you know, Um, But by and large, it's hand management, kind of exploration movement, and um, it's about it. It's it's theme. It's just it's storytelling. It's it's living out an an immersive experience. Yep. Um, This is a one to five player game, Mm -hmm. but we've played it at six, so we didn't to like all of us showed up and we went ahead and and added all six characters because there are six characters in there. And it just meant that that sixth character didn't have somebody that would try to kill them. Yeah. Like they, they weren't ever going to get the card, like go kill player number three or something like that. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like it played the same. It didn't play any slower. It didn't feel any different at six. So I would say it's one to six. It can be. Yeah. The only thing is as long as you know that that one player is, isn't going to be, be the, the, yeah. But yeah. other than that, not saying they're not going to be eliminated. Right, but, but they're not going to be eliminated by another player. How's yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> so the time, I think it takes us, this is a three-hour game. Easily, yes. This is, a, this is a three-hour game. I don't know if it's much longer than that, but it's, you know, it's in that two and a half. It's a three-hour game. It's at least a three-hour yeah. game. So, yeah. With a full complement of people. Well, yeah. I'll give it that. I've... Like, I, you know, we don't play it at two. We don't play it at three. We play it at five. Yeah. <laughs> or four. I think. I, I've but I think it, it's always a five. Yeah, I think I've played it four, five, and six. Yeah, yeah. I've played it at two, but that has been, that was like so long ago. It was great when I launched my son out of the air. No, I didn't <laughs> launch this. I I set the ship to explode, and then I got out on the escape pod, and he blew up. <laughs> right at the Father last Father of turn, the year right there. Because he thought, and he was like, look, we won. And I'm like, and then he tried to get out, and I left. Lock the door on him. <laughs> oh, he likes to do that to a lot of us in yeah. some way, shape, or form. It Just was, annoy us all the way to the very is. end of death. So, <laughs> anyway. So, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of overview what goes on? There's a lot. So, in in the rapid review area of this, I'm not going to go all over these phases. You have player phase where all the players get to do something on their turn. And then you have the event phase. So it is an event phase. Um, aliens can co- do and can come out on the player phase, but they're not necessarily going to attack until the event phase. Um, you're going to flip over a card and see what kind of catastrophic thing is happening, which goes along with the theme, the, you know, the ship is starting to catch fire. The ship, something like, you know, and I almost wish there were more bad things going on in the ship sometimes because some games it's like, oh my God, everything is just starting to like fall. feels like it's falling, falling apart. apart. Yeah. And like other games, it's like you're not drawing the really bad cards. Um, so, <laughs> but. Um, I don't know if I've been in games that we have not pulled out the bad cards. <laughs> I feel like that's I don't a know. common thing I feel like there's some, us. either that or in my mind that some games are just so much more like, oh my God, how are we going to get out of this? Well, you've played this a good bit more than I have. Yeah, so. yeah. But, um, but the, you know, it's those two phases. And everybody, it, the map is hidden at the start, and so you're trying to, except for a couple of permanent locations, like the the bridge and the engine area, you know where the engine rooms are and things like that. But you're trying to explore the map, and as you uncover them, there's different things you can do in the rooms. Like you might find the surgery room, which can heal you. You might find... You know, the computer control where you can open the airlock and launch an alien that's in there out or another person in there that's out. <laughs> you know, all these different things are kind of going on um, within the game. So, you know, it's map 
exploration. You can't just run from one end of the ship to the other. You know, that would be like almost, they could almost take the whole game. Everybody's kind of got to like divide and conquer. Um, so you feel the grandeur of it, mm -hmm. you know, without it being too, you know, you're not Rambo in this game. You're the no. opposite of that. No, and you absolutely, even if you're a trader, you still have to play cooperatively. So you really get to make plans as to, well, I'm going to go fix an engine or I'm going to go, you know, do this or, mm -hmm. oh, we, you know, we've got fire here. Somebody go take care of it. And so you're kind of, you, ha you have to kind of work together, which is part of, I think, the the big draw fun of this is yeah. just kind of having that experience. Yep. So what kind of pros do you got? Um, one is just the immersive experience of mm -hmm. this game. And for me, it's the almost like, I don't care what happens in the outcome. It's just the time spent playing it. Like that's my draw. I don't normally mm -hmm. go to games like this, although I'm starting to get more Zombicide and some other things that I'm enjoying. But for me, it's just, it's mad chaos when we sit and play. Like you feel the stress and the chaos and the humor because that's all you can do is laugh at the things that are happening to you because they're so bad. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 why I love this game. I mean, that's my biggest pro. Yeah, and I, to me, it's this game is right there with Star Wars Rebellion. Those are the two that, like, to me have, and really they're the only two that I've found is a board game in a box. You get all these, like, hey, they've ported this video game over to the board game or they've ported, like, mm -hmm. these two Rebellion in this, absolutely 100% successful in that iteration. So that's my biggest con, my biggest pro. Like, it really did. Now, it the more I play it, the less I feel it. But those first five plays, have, every time I play it, it's great. But those first few times really felt dripping. Yeah. You know, really felt, you know... I, I don't get the theme quite as much. I understand it, but Brad's watched these movies a lot more than I have. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I miss out on some things, but what I love is just, I feel like I'm there. Like I'm feel like I'm in the middle of this, this madness. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's, it's fun. I like the ragging on each other, like things like you can go down and check if the engines are good or bad. It likes, Oh, somebody went to repair them. Well, did they? Yeah. And then you want somebody else to go back and check and did they, are they telling you the truth? They can't, yeah. they can't like, show nobody you. Nobody trusts anybody. <laughs> yeah, they, they can't show you what if it's repaired or not, but they can just tell you like, <laughs> oh no, he lied, even though he may not have lied, and now they're lying. <laughs> like yeah. You just have all these things. This is the biggest game of distrust. <laughs> it's a cooperative game. You can't trust anybody. Yeah. You're in it for yourself, and that's so, it. So it is kind of interesting <laughs> in that way. I, uh, think, I think it's also very replayable. Yeah, I, I haven't bought the expansions mainly because I don't feel like I've played this game out yet. Yeah. It doesn't come out un mm -hmm. monthly so that it feels repetitive. It feels like, oh, what's going to happen this time? Mm -hmm. Who's going to die or barely not die? Or who's going to be like, they get a, you know, a severe injury so they're sp they can only move like one spot every turn so that... Ha, you know, 30% of their game is just trying to find or make it to the surgery bay, <laughs> which that in one way happens. sucks yeah. because I've been that guy. <laughs> or in the other way, you're kind of like, it's kind of hilarious. Like, yeah, this is... <laughs> There's Brad again. All the way stuck with that alien he can't get away from. <laughs> yeah. What a way. <laughs> so. What are the pros? Um, the, When I talk about our party group, party game groups games right this is what i'm talking about like mm -hmm. we're not we don't necessarily talking about cards against humanity which you know like in the general public that would be a party game i've played it i enjoy it so forth and so on but like our gaming group these are the kind of when we talk about party games these are the kind of games we we gravitate towards because it's just fun mm -hmm. doesn't matter really what's happening win or lose or draw it's it's what's going on in the experience and the laughing and like oh my god you got you drew the queen and you die. You know, you get not only did you draw the queen, queen came out, then the very first card you flip over is the tail spike. Whoosh, instant death. You know, like. <laughs> it happens. It does. But happened even... to one guy who never came back to our game group after that. <laughs> I wasn't there that night. I feel bad about that, but it was still funny. We let him continue to play and, and not die, but it was like. His it was very, the beginning of the game, wasn't it? Was it was the very beginning of the game, like the first room he went in. It was like. <laughs> Bad luck after and the bad luck. Like, the odds of that happening 
not high. I've never seen it happen again in the game, but it was funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was not there that night. Uh, kind of wish I was, but mm-hmm. it probably would have been me. Um, Which would have been even better. Yeah, because then I'd never come back, and, well, then I wouldn't be getting touched. Please don't touch me. Please stop it's touching me. It's touching your beard. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Sound boost. I'm putting them up. Sound boost. I'm going to be in my own isolated space where Brad cannot get near me. I so, wasn't touching you as an alien. Yeah, uh-huh. You keep telling yourself that. So cons. <laughs> cons. The paint job. All right. Well, I paint. <laughs> All this. It, but the biggest hurdle to this game is is the rule set. It, I I think the rules could be written a little bit easier to understand and not kind of like all over the place. It feels like, um, you know, it, it you you'll get there eventually, but like the just learning the game and being like, wait a minute, what happened? Something happened. Like there's so many triggers of a rule. Something trigger some. Other things happen when the first alien shows up. Things happen when the first person dies. Things happen. Like, all these things happen, right? And then so you have to reference a lot of stuff. And then, like, you know, each... And you'll you'll get the fact that in each one of the rooms, they're different. So at least you can look at this. Um, but there, there's just a lot. And you need it to be to give you this experience. So it's not just, like, so cut and dry. Board game. It's... It's a board game, but at the same time, it's an experience. Yeah. And the rules are written to give you an experience, but that makes it tough at, some, tough at times. So that's going to segue into one of mine. Is this game overly complex, and is it unnecessarily overly complex? And I would say yes Could to be. both of those. Yeah, I, I think there's, granted... One of the things I love about this game is the chaos and the stress and the feeling that you have, like that immersive nature. But when it's also all of that outside of the board game experience, then it's just, there. there's just too much. Like, it's too many rules, too many things going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's the big downfall. Yeah. Like, I, I usually, like, we think about, hey, we're, what are we going to play this week? And, like, Nemesis comes up. And my first thought sometimes is, uh, do I really want to go because it's just so much? And then all of a sudden, it's I love it. Some of my favorite gaming experiences we've had as a group have been playing Nemesis. Mm-hmm. But it's just, there's there's a lot. You've got your board. You've got your deck. You've got all these other cards that I can never get. <laughs> never get. Um, and, that, I mean, it's just, there's just so much. That's that's probably my biggest con. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it does help if you have other people who learn the game alongside you that can help you remember everything. We've got about three of us that know the game, and the other two probably know it better than me at this point, so it's nice. <laughs> Who's the NO1? Who's the Alex other? and Ashby. Ashby. Oh, uh, Ashby, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, weight rating. Oh, we're done with cons. Okay. Yeah, we're not. Fine. We're rapid reviewing this. I know. I had more. I, had, I actually have a lot more cons than I have pros, which is funny. <laughs> Um, but I guess we won't talk about them. So weight rating, um, 3.46 is what's listed on BGG. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to split this game in half. I don't see this as a board game. So the board game itself, overly complex. And I think that actually drives it up more because I don't want to sit and learn the rules and play all the rules and just deal with all that. But the actual experience sitting down and playing it, I don't think of it as a 3.45. So, like, I don't sit down when we actually play the game and feel like it is that complex of a game. Maybe I'm not playing it as I should. Maybe I'm just there for the fun experience and the chaos and just kind of going around. So, like, in my mind, I think of this as, like, a 3. But I do understand where it is more because there is so much going on, and I never remember the, everything on the board. Well, or really we're, how to keep we're managing it. that, I think, more than you. So yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. Right. So he's able to just kind of focus on his character, move into a room, figure out what he's going to do, things like that. So there's, you almost have to have a DM looking at everything that, you know, when's the alien going to attack? Who's who's doing what? There's, you know, breaking up some of those mechanics and the, the upkeep of the game. Yeah. Um, but I would. I would agree, but the the reason I think it's a 3.5 is the difficulty to learn it mm-hmm. and the triggers for the different um, instances that do something, and then the fighting isn't 
intuitive you know no, like yeah. the fighting is flip over a card and then you look at the card and the I like the fact that the alien's health changes throughout the fight it just mm -hmm. randomly whatever card you flip up tells you what the health is and you have to have been able to wound it that many times you know there's different things about it that make it nice but it also makes it like kind of confusing yeah you know so yeah it's there's a lot i can i can understand why it's yeah. up there i i can but again i'm not the person i'm the euro gamer this is not normally my style so i don't mm -hmm. i don't think of this as as board game night i think of this as hey we're getting together and instead of board game night we're gonna have this fun and do this and <laughs> so they dm it and i just show up and die there you go. It's fun. So I guess that's accurate, 3.5? I think 3.5, you know, and like maybe the first time you play it, you're going to feel like it's maybe a 3.75, even if it could be a 4, just because you're just kind of like, where? You're like, yeah, you know. So I've got a question, mm. and I've got an answer for this, and maybe you do too. Who is this game for? Like, who is it not for? Because here's what right. I can say is, for me because of the weight rating where it falls and how I play the game, it's, I don't want to add this to my shelf. I'm glad Brad has it because it's not something that I'm going to want to sit down and learn and, and take the time to play with a gaming group. That's not experienced already in the game. Right. I would say if you just like mechanics and puzzles of board games, and that's what you like the most. And anytime you, veer over to something like Zombicide or a real-time thing or something that isn't like mechanic and a puzzle-driven kind of thing, you're not going to like this game. I don't think you're enjoy the enjoyment you have out of board games is based more along a me mechanic. I don't think this is going to be a game for you. You're not going to feel it. Um, also, I think if you don't have a group that, you know, is kind of like okay with dying and giving each other a hard time and, you know being holistically, you know, kind of giving each other garbage <laughs> along the way in all of the games you play, this might not be a game for you. You know, this is, this is, I still call it a board game. I understand the, the reasons people say it is absolutely not a board game, but you know, it is, <laughs> it is, it's played on a board. You have other things like there's a lot of board games I would say aren't board games that, you know, other people would argue as well. But, you know, in this one, you're getting this extra layer of, you know, tying it back to a movie. And, you know, I think if you enjoyed the Aliens movies, any of the trilogy or whatever, five, however many there are now, I don't know, you can count the Prometheus ones or not. But, um, you know, like, I think you would enjoy this. I think I think you really would. And it, But you also have to be okay with a trader mechanic and, and um, player elimination. You know, like, those are the things. Like, if you aren't okay with those, this isn't for you. Don't spend the money. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah. I don't know if this is something I'd want to go to a convention and necessarily sit down and play unless it's people that I know. Like, I love going to conventions and we play with other people. You know, you learn new games, all that kind of stuff. But I don't think the reason why I like this game is because I'm sitting down with people who know how to play it. Mm -hmm. And it's we all know each other. We are good with we always rag on each other. Like that's mm -hmm. a big yeah. part of our, our game group. What you see between us right here is usually also what you see with the rest of our gaming group. So, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I don't know. So that's what it's not. It, yeah. Would yeah, you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I don't think, cause I am the exact person that Brad just described. It's not that I don't like this game. I do like this game. You'll see my value rate or my, my overall rating in a little bit, but I do not want to buy this game and I wouldn't want to sit down and, play this game with like another gaming group that I have because it's not going to be an experience that I don't think any of us are going to enjoy so much. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But that's, that's the big Euro gamer. I hate trader. I hate player elimination. And so. yet, this... and yet, yeah. Gonna, so anyways, gonna... thanks for answering that uh, yeah. value. What is the value rating? So this one's hard to get now. Like it's almost not on any of the shelves or sold out. So when they, one of the reasons the new Kickstarter did so well is people were buying the base game. They might have been buying. They might have been buying all of it because it's, it's become hard to find. Lock lockdown, I think, is available. The kind of expansion of this, which gives you a few more players and such, is not available. It doesn't seem. Um, but you can kind of get this used for around 150. I bought it for 150. 
I think I got it off Amazon because like at my local gaming store, it was like 165. And at that time I was like, there's no way I'm paying that much for a board game. Lord forbid. Now I pay that every time I turn around, it feels like, but you know, I, I loved it. Right. And so I was very happy. Like I, maybe I could pay 150, 145, whatever, but you know, it was so worth it to me. I haven't gotten this down to $10 a play yet because I still haven't played it 15 times because we want a full group. We want that immersion experience. Um, and But at the same time, it's allowed me to like not go chasing after the other ones, right? This, is, this hasn't gotten worn out yet. So I think if you can get it, you know, around 100, which it has been at times, it's a, you know, a five out of five for me, value rating for experience, right? Now, you still want to play it a few times. Even at $100, you're going to want to play it 10 times <laughs> to get down way. to $10, right? But, you know, you can play five. Like I said, we've played six. Didn't change the game. Yeah, It does still hold up at six. So, you know, all that being said, you know, if you can get under 100 bucks, I would definitely say it's a five out of five. 150 Eh, it's getting tough. It's three. You may, you know, you may not get it played enough to really feel like you got your money's worth out of it at 150. And that's kind of why I've shied away from the other games. And we also just play too many different games. Like we'd never get to bring yeah. games out on a regular <laughs> basis. Yeah. And that's, and, and we still love this. Yeah. And that's, I guess that's the thing. It's like, we're playing a ton of other games and I, this one, when it comes out, and it will, we'll still all be like, Alex wants to let somebody shoot somebody out the airlock. His life goal is to not be a traitor and still shoot somebody out of the airlock. That's, he just wants to create that movie experience for <laughs> himself. So we all avoid that freaking place like the plague. <laughs> when he's playing especially, yes, definitely. If he's near a computer monitor, nobody's going in that room. <laughs> so, so BGG ratings. Yes. You or me? I'll go ahead first because I forget what your rating is on this. Okay. But uh, for me, the Euro gamer who hates player elimination <laughs> and trader mechanics, this is an eight and a half. <laughs> I love playing this game. Now, again, I've only played it with our gaming group with people who know the game. I don't have to be, I don't have to know the whole rule book. They kind of help me through it a little bit. I think we all do that with each other, but yep. I just, I, it's, it is a game. There's things to do. The stress that I get from playing this game is off the charts. <laughs> we laugh. We cry. No joke. I think we've done both. And it's it's just it's just such an experience. That's mm -hmm. you don't get that in other games. You don't get that in Euro games so much. It's so much fun. Absolutely love playing this game. Yeah, for sure. My BGG rating. Well. BGG has, then this is still impressive, 29,000 people have rated it. I always have mentioned that like Gaia Project was 24,000. There's almost 30,000 people that have rated this game. So that's impressive. Um, and it's still sitting at an 8.3 on BGG. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. Mine, I, I, I don't give it, I don't think I give anything a 10. I think I've given one game a 10, two maybe. I, mean, I, I wonder if I should with this one, but I still say this is a 9. Like, you know, it, I don't want to play it every month, mm. you know, but I love it when I play it. So, mm. you know, I think if I wanted to play it every month, I, it would be a 10, like, you know, but, you know, I can't, I can't say it's the perfect game. The rule set's a little bit convoluted, but boy, I love that experience. Yeah. Man, I love that experience. It's still in my top 10 of all time. Yeah. I was Rebellion isn't. <laughs> Rebellion like moved up. Because I don't get to play that often. I still get to play this more than I ever get to play Rebellion. And Rebellion is really just a two-player game. So yeah. I can play this up to six. Win. This is on my top 100. I don't remember where. And I tried to like find my list before this just to see. We just did our top 100 games of all time. But I think it fell on mine and, and fell to a lower position. I think it's down somewhere in the, I don't know, maybe 80s. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. But it's still it's still such a good game. It's not yeah. on my top ten, but it's it's up there. But I under I understand why it's your top ten. Like yeah. I do. We yeah. are very different in certain areas, and that's this yeah. hits, this hits the boss. I think you should name it a ten, but, excluding all of this. Yeah, 
So, so that'd be my caveat, right? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. And I we haven't played any of the expansions. We haven't played anything else. Like I said, I think this is fun. Yeah. And Even when Alex we make bought, up our own rules. Alex bought Lockdown, so maybe after we play it a few times, we'll be able to review that and tell you how I compare this versus that. <laughs> I'm curious <laughs> how it plays different because I, I don't I, I I want to like this for the board game, mm-hmm. like I like, you know, other games, other games. Yeah. But so I'm wondering if it plays any different to the point that I'm going to feel like it's more of a board game and then still have the experience and the fun that I have of playing this. Right. So. We'll see. Alex, you have to bring it over. Definitely. So comment down below, you know, is it a board game? Isn't it a board game? You like it. You hate it. You bought it. You bought everything. You've got all the expansions. You did all the, every, you know, the newest Kickstarter. I'm just curious to know how this rates for you. Yeah. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like Toph, comment. It's okay. My feelings won't be hurt. He tells me all the time that I just... <laughs> He doesn't like it. I mean, heck, he tries to kill me in this game, so it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you sitting at the table for our reviews and chaos and madness and everything else that goes on here at Battleboard Games. And just remember, no matter how you play, whether it's solo, with family, or friends, enjoy whatever game or table experiences mm-hmm. you're bringing. Have a great night.